Have we sure. heard publicly from either the captain um, or the um, <laughs> harbor pilot? Uh, I, I've heard that there's two minutes of uh, data missing from the black box. Any of that that, that we're getting uh, uh, more information on a week out? So that's very interesting that you point that out because a number of people in the intelligence community um, pointed that out to me as well as a sign that the absence of normal is abnormal, right? Because mm -hmm. ordinarily, if you think of other things in the past where there's been, you know, colossal accidents like the deep rig, you know, horizon, right? That oil rig that happened or other things that have happened with the Maersk, Alabama. I mean, it is customary for the ship's captain and other people that are involved that are I first hand eyewitnesses for them to have been interviewed in the media and to give their first hand account of what happened. But to my knowledge, and I have not been, you know, following other people's reporting on this minute by minute, so it's possible something else happened, but there certainly has not been widespread um interviews, if any interviews, with any of these people. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. Because normally you would expect that th that, that would be a large mm. part of the story uh, mm -hmm. a week in. You would think. But no. no. That, that's very astute. That is a very astute observation. And it's one that within the first 24 hours, 48 hours, right. you know, and so on, mm -hmm. the people in the community were saying to me, look, look at all the signs. Yeah. It, look it, at all the signs that even, this is not a normal event. Yeah, even if it's just a, a reporter doing a stand-up in the harbor that would say, yeah, and, and we uh, heard from the uh, boat's captain that blah, blah, blah was acting weird. Nothing like that. So, so I guess uh, I, I know overnight – you tweeted out um, that uh, uh, in the wake of the BLM riots and the defund the police movement, Baltimore axed a very uh, specific unit of its police force. Do you want to tell us about that? Yes. I mean, obviously, when you write something up, you know, you lose sort of more formal language. But I can tell you that the people I spoke to were like, mm. can you believe that the most important port for the eastern seaboard <laughs> has no marine unit anymore. Wow. They have no divers of their own. Oh my gosh. Can look under the water. They have Baltimore no has no divers of their, of their own. own, no unit of their own anymore? No police presence. Oh my gosh. They have to rely on the Coast Guard. <laughs> oh, that's, that's who crazy. they rely on. Wow. That yes, and that's crazy. why that, you know that's why you saw the Coast Guard immediately <laughs> being referenced when this happened because it's the Coast Guard that they have to turn on. So you took basically a wow. unit that had very experienced divers, yeah. you know, and, and diving, of course, is a skill, right? I mean, it, this is something that this is not experience that is acquired easily. This is not like sort of every sheriff's department or every traffic cop in America mm -hmm. where, you know, it doesn't take very long to get on-the-job experience, right? This is much more um Detailed. This is, and you had very experienced decades of marine uh, knowledge, you know, and and um, boats that were specially equipped. And I mean, this was a very important unit. It was used all the time. Everything from people who were drunk on the water falling in, <laughs> right, to um, to much more serious things during floods and and massive weather events, and you know, um, advanced search and rescue under the water. I mean, uh, I'm a diver. Right. I've been a diver um, since I was very, very young. So I have limited experience of what they're dealing with. But these guys are on a whole nother level. So they just basically dumped them. They dumped that unit. I mean, go back wow. to 2020. This was this was documented. This is not you know, they love to say this is conspiracy when it doesn't fit the right. narrative. Right. Yeah. And then what? Yeah. They use this these information warfare tactics where they will they will spend hours discussing on social media and they'll bring out. They'll roll out the usual suspects. There'll be people that write stories about the same old narrative, you know, that Lara Logan used to be this amazing reporter when when she was basically winning every award in journalism at 60 Minutes and CBS News, and she was, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we were all uh, looking to her reporting, right, as an industry. <laughs> yes. We were, we were putting her on the front page of magazines and writing up glowing profiles in the New York Times and Washington Post. Well, they love to say, <laughs> they want you to believe that I do something different now. Yes. But I don't do what I always do. In mm -hmm. fact, the only thing I don't do that I always did is that I put a little more credibility and faith into the official statements of our agencies and our mm -hmm. government. Because at that time, I really didn't understand the extent to which people mm -hmm. are willing to lie mm -hmm. to, to create <laughs> and support a false narrative.